greetings from SJB Institute of Technology. I am Anita. Um, in this session, we are going to continue with module 5, which is uh, about uh, antenna types and loop and horn antennas. As we have discussed in previous sessions, uh, Aguda array and horn antenna, helical antenna. Now, in this session, we will discuss about a horn antenna, uh, then followed by parabolic dish antenna. So this is a structure of horn antenna and you have uh, different types of horn antennas like it is a E plane horn antenna and this is H plane horn antenna and this is pyramidal horn antenna. So what is a horn antenna means you have an extension of a waveguide. So this is a waveguide portion. Waveguide is nothing but a guided structure which is meant for transmitting the uh, radio waves uh, by hitting the walls. Um, here you have uh, at the end of a waveguide you will have a flaring so that flaring which is done in which direction based upon that you will have either E plane or H plane or pyramidal type uh, and all these are uh, sectorial horn types conical horn you have uh, otherwise uh, similar, uh, similarly you have uh, different types of horn antennas uh, you can observe now here in E plane uh, the flaring of uh, the waveguide which is done in parallel to the electric field if it is done in parallel to the electric field that is usually we consider uh, E means uh, perpendicular vertical direction H means uh, horizontal uh, that is in horizontal direction uh, in this case you have a flaring which is done in perpendicular <coughs> perpendicular direction so that's why it is a e plane sectorial horn whereas in h plane sectorial horn the flaring this is flaring so the flaring which is done in uh, mm, horizontal so that's why it is a h plane sectorial horn antennas and uh, you have uh, another type pyramidal horn where the flaring is done in both the directions mm, in e direction as well as in H direction. Here it is in E direction, here it is in H direction and here it is in both the directions. So electric field varies simultaneously along uh, A as well as it is uniformly varied in B direction. Along with the uh, sectorial horn, pyramidal horn, you have a conical horn and exponential horn antennas. In the same manner you have a, a cone type of so you have a waveguide extension of this will be like a cone so uh, again in this we have a conical horn biconical horn similarly uh, exponential horn type also you have so this is the one uh, horn antenna is the one most widely used and simplest form of microwave antenna which is majorly used as a, a feed element for large astronomy communication dish antennas and satellite dish antennas. So it is considered as an aperture antenna, has a waveguide uh, with a hollow pipe of different cross sections. It can be flared or tapered into large openings. Why we are opening this means? In order to match the impedance with the free space, we are providing a flaring in one particular direction which matches with the free space impedance then maximum radiations occur in that direction. So coming to the um, working of that or operation of that, so electromagnetic uh, wave propagation in a waveguide it is actually different from the free space in waveguide usually propagation is restricted by the walls conducting walls it hits the walls and uh, the wave will be propagated and it will not spread out after reaching the mouth the waves has to spread laterally and the wave front becomes a spherical wave front at the mouth of the waveguide there exists a near field region where the wave front is complicated one. Uh, so we need a transition region where the change of propagation from waveguide to free space has to take place. So as the impedance has not matched, we will flare the structure which is called as a horn. Flaring is done mainly to provide impedance matching and to have a more directivity and narrow bandwidth antenna. Horn antenna 
produces uniform plane wave front with a large aperture in comparison to wave guide as the aperture is large so directivity of this will be obviously uh, large so coming to the design equations of a horn antenna if you consider the horn antenna so which is in this direction suppose if i consider this as uh, uh, l this distance as l and this distance as l and the small section as delta and this height is considered as h r a r d any any one d then uh, you can consider this as a triangle with the triangle concept one can find out uh, cos theta by 2 suppose if i consider total angle as theta and half angle will become theta by 2 then cos theta will be uh, l by l plus delta so which is uh, uh, adjacent side l by l plus delta similarly tan theta by 2 will become d by 2 divided by l opposite side by adjacent side so d by 2 divided by l by 2. so you can consider from that theta value as tat in tan inverse and cos inverse you can express d by 2l or cos inverse of l by l plus lambda where l indicating uh, you can calculate that l value as d square by 8 into l 8 into uh, delta so this you can calculate from pythagoras uh, theorem concept so which is l plus delta whole square equals to l square plus a by 2 whole square or d by 2 whole square from this by approximation one can calculate the length as a d square by 8 into delta uh, this is about the design concept coming to uh, parameters different parameters like half power beam width gain directivity one can calculate uh, as these are the half power beam width in theta and phi direction which is 56 degrees into lambda by de and uh, 67 degrees into lambda by a uh, h or dh so these de dh indicating the aperture uh, length in e direction and in h direction uh, coming to the directivity of our antenna which is 7.5 into a a divided by lambda square where a a indicating physical area physical area of that you can find out by multiplying the flaring in e direction and uh, length in e aperture in e direction and h direction so that is R A E A H R D E D H. Both notation might differ, but remember uh, uh, the total area if I want to get, which is length in E direction and length in H direction. That is horizontal and vertical. Uh, directivity once if you, if I know I can calculate gain as efficiency times directivity. Efficiency as I have told usually it is 60%. 0.6 of 7.5 into AA divided by lambda square which results in 4.5 into AA by uh, lambda square. So we have seen about the Hahn antenna and uh, its characteristics and its parameters. I will see about the uh, silent features of a uh, Hahn antenna. Hahn antenna becomes small if the flare angle is small that is it majorly depends upon the flaring flare angle theta so if the flare angle is small then uh, you'll have a simple small structure then you'll have a radiation pattern which is directive it is a directive antenna and wave front is spherical wave front and mouth area usually very uh, means so if theta is small obviously you'll get mouth area as small and its directivity is also small Suppose if flare angle uh, is increased, obviously the rest of the parameters like uh, mouth area, directivity, all this will increase because uh, mouth area is directly proportional to the directivity. If mouth area increases, obviously directivity will get increased. So flare angle is related to the axial length. Uh, if theta is equal to 15 degrees, that is flare angle if it is equal to 15 degrees and uh, when the length is equal to uh, in terms of wavelength as 50 beam width of that if you calculate half power beam width using the above formula 
if you calculate using this formula if you calculate will result with 20 degrees 23 degrees and the directivity if you calculate will get around 120 highly directive antenna if i want 10 decibels you can take a 10 log of this directivity of pyramidal horn antenna is more compared to uh, E plane sectorial or H plane sectorial because uh, obviously in E and H directions the flaring happens in pyramidal horn. Mouth area becomes increased as well as the directivity will increase. If the direct its directivity is too is not high as that of the parabolic compared to parabolic uh, compared to parabolic it is less but compared to other antennas it is a highly directive antenna it is majorly used as a radiator uh, used as an extension of the waveguide with the waveguide mainly it is used as a primary antenna for a parabolic uh, dish antenna the gain of that parabolic dish antenna that is a, a conical horn antenna can be calculated uh, by using this formula square root of 3 by lambda uh, this is for a conical type of antenna uh, lossless horn antenna directivity 4 pi into a a indicating effective aperture a a indicating uh, physical aperture you know relation between a e and a a so a e effective aperture is equal to efficiency time to times the physical aperture so obviously a e will be less compared to a p physical aperture in the case of a rectangular horn antenna we will multiply the aperture in e and h direction Whereas if it is in conical horn antenna, which is diameter, if you know, conical horn area, you can calculate as pi, uh, pi, uh, pi into d or pi r square. So you uh, with uh, aperture efficiency as 0.6, already I have discussed, you will get that value of directivity as 7.5 into ap by lambda square. And majorly horn antennas are used at microwave frequencies with moderate gains and it is majorly used as a feed element for uh, horn and parabolic dish antennas and majorly it is used in laboratories for measurement of different antenna parameters like gain or directivity or radiation pattern no? uh, to evaluate that uh, this is used in laboratory uh, in an anechoic chamber to measure the parameters now coming to other type of antenna which is parabolic uh, dish antenna which is which will consider as a micro strip and microwave antenna so in a microwave antenna if you see uh, the definition of a microwave antenna the size of the antenna majorly depends upon the frequency of operation if the frequency is low obviously the size of the antenna will be large and vice versa so that means if frequency is uh, increased size of the antenna will decrease microwave as we know that it extends from 1 to 100 gigahertz transmitting and receiving antennas in the microwave frequencies should be directive and you have to have a very high gain and you have to have a very high gain and narrow beam, beam width and which should be in both horizontal and vertical planes microwave antennas are popular for their small in size so microwave antennas are different types of microwave antennas comes under reflector antennas horn antennas lens antennas slot, slot type microstrip all these are used in gigahertz gigahertz there are different types of reflector antennas under that first one which we will discuss about which is reflector antenna uh, different types of reflectors that we have are rod lift rod uh, rod lift reflector plane reflector corner type cylindrical type then horn then spherical then finally parabolic reflector antenna so I'll show you the structures then followed by uh, the parabolic one which is more concentrated on. So this is a plain type uh, reflector antenna and there's a feed where you can uh, give the feed microwave signal which hits the reflector. It is actually working as a reflector, reflects the energy in the other direction. So it reflects the energy, wave front will be generated. Uh, here you can observe the wave front will have a more diversive in order to convert that into a highly directive 
they have made as a corner reflector so by making this as a corner reflector one can uh, make the uh, reflector antenna as more directive then coming to next type uh, this is a uh, cassegrain type different types of curved type later they have changed to curved type and uh, this is uh, a uh, corner view of uh, refl corner reflector antenna with alpha value different alpha values then later they have uh, means uh, this, this is a um, wire grid structure from wire single reflector they had uh, or uh, placed different uh, types of means they have placed a wire grid to enhance the directivity and placed it in the form of a corner then wire grid arrangement which they have done with a supporting structure later uh, they have made that into a, um, a sheet type sheet reflectors and then this is about the corner reflector with five images and uh, three images with number of images keeps on increasing this is a uh, corner reflector again sheet wire grid type and a prospective view uh, for a better collamination of the power in a forward direction uh, instead of having a one element they have made it as a two planes joined to form as a corner that's the reason why they named it as a corner reflector it is simple in construction and it has uh, many unique applications uh, for example reflector can be used as a passive target for radar and communication applications then the next one is a parabolic reflector so it's a reflector antenna again uh, which has uh, the shape as that of a paraboloid that's the reason why and it includes the properties of a parabola that's the reason why they named as a parabolic reflector it is a plane curve obtained by uh, the locus of a point uh, the focus and the directrix as uh, directrix as a constant so it is a plane curve obtained by the locus of a point which moves such that its distance from another point that we call it as a focus plus plus its distance from a straight line that is called as a directrix it is maintained as constant Th that's what we'll see in the next cell slide showing an expression a por paraboloid actually it is a three dimensional surface obtained by uh, revolving uh, the parabola about its axis the parabola is called as a parabolic reflector or we also call it as a dish antenna most of the tv receiving antennas nowadays which we are using is of type parabolic dish antenna so the geometry one can notice here this is the geometry of parabolic dish antenna and the radiation pattern so radiation pattern it is bidirectional from bidirectional to unidirectional it has been uh, transformed and highly directive antenna radiation is in only one direction these are side lobes and minor lobes and if you see the geometry so a b there are different uh, notations which has been given you can notice a b which is giving a axis this is the axis of the parabola and cd which is indicating a mouth that mouth diameter which we also call it as a da different notation and the focal length which is lf which is nothing but a to f this is a focal point this is f a to f so this is a focal length lf length and a is the vertex f is the focal point and c a d c a d indicating a parabola the line c d indicating directrix or the mouth diameter a f to c d ratio which should be maintained as constant that's what uh, which has been told in parabola which is an aperture of the parabola if the beams if if a beam of parallel rays which are incident upon the reflector whose geometrical shape is in parabola the radiation will converge and get focused at a spot called as a focal point this is in the case of a receiving antenna in case of transmitting antenna waves will get emerged from uh, focal point towards the reflector and from the reflector it will be emerged uh, into the free space uh, as a plane wave front so uh, one can also call it as a parabola parabolic reflector converts a spherical wave front into a parabola uh, plane wave front so if in the same manner 
uh, if a point source is placed at the focal point rays get reflected by the parabola and will emerge as a parallel beam the symmetrical point on the parabola uh, parabolic surface which we call it as a vertex rays which are emerged in parallel form uh, uh, which are said to be collaminated since wet, whether it is a transmitter or the receiver which is placed at the focal point of the parabola the configuration usually it is known as a front end there are different terminologies which you need to know to understand uh, in a better manner about the parabolic reflector coming to the first one which is a focus it is a point where all the incoming radio waves are concentrated this is with respect to considering a uh, uh, parabolic reflector as a receiving antenna vertex vertex is the innermost point at the center of the parabolic uh, reflector as i have uh, shown you already point a is vertex point f is focal point so f from the focal po focus or uh, point where uh, you'll emerge the radio waves or you'll uh, receive the radio waves vertex is the point it, it is in this here it is a focal point f and this is the point vertex a in our most point of at the center of a parabolic reflector focal length it is the distance between these two and focal length of the parabola is the distance between uh, the focus and its vertex then coming to aperture this is cad uh, c d this is a aperture the aperture of a parabola it's a open is its opening and it is describing by its diameter and uh, from the definition of parabola as uh, we know that uh, f 2p and uh, pp dash that means uh, from this is focal point if at any point if i consider so if it has p then p dash f 2p and p 2p dash which must be equal to f 2q and q 2q dash similarly f 2s s 2s dash so if if this is maintained as uh, constant and this k value usually varies with the shape of the antenna and uh, equation of the is a well known equation of a parabolic uh, parabola y square is equal to 4 into lf into x uh, paraboloid uh, expression and uh, as we have seen uh, the parabolic antenna earlier coming to the working of a parabolic reflector if a feed antenna is placed at the focus all the waves which are incident on the reflector and they are be, they and they are reflected back forming a plane wave front this is a case considering uh, parabolic reflector as a transmitting antenna by the time the reflected waves reaches the directrix all of them will be in same phase irrespective of the point uh, on the parabola from which they have reflected this is due to the uh, this concept as we have maintained that as a constant k uh, the time taken will be same and uh, radiation hence the radiation will be very high and is concentrated along the axis of the uh, parabola because as we are having a same phase all of them all will be in same phase so directivity will be more radiation will be more at the same time waves will be cancelled in all other directions which results in path and that is mainly due to path and phase differences so the main purpose of parabolic reflector is to convert a spherical wave front to plane wave front this is in case of uh, um, uh, transmitting case in reflector receiving case it is from plane wave type wave front to spherical wave front so this is a diagram representing uh, how uh, wave front a difference between a plane wave and a spherical wave this is a plane wave this is a wave front and this is the one spherical wave direction of propagation that's the wave front so it converts in case of transmitting antenna it converts a spherical wave into a plane wave in case of receiving antenna it converts a plane wave to spherical wave so after knowing this uh, geometry and the working one can notice about the parameters uh, of an antenna so you can make use the feed uh, primary feed uh, primary antenna or the feed antenna as a non directional or isotropic antenna the half power beam width and personal beam width can be calculated by knowing a diameter mouth diameter so 17 into lambda by da da indicating a mouth diameter 
that is a CAD value and uh, directivity once if you know half power beam width or from this formula you can calculate 9.87 uh, to dA by lambda whole square this is for small structures for uh, uniformly uh, for a large and uniformly illuminated uh, rectangular apertures this is for isotropic antenna given as a feed non uh, means primary feed as an isotropic suppose if I give a rectangular aperture as a feed then in such case slight variations in uh, uh, formulas then uh, coming to the gain of an antenna one can calculate uh, based on the power gain calculation 4 pi by lambda square into AC which is uh, AC is nothing but the capture area can calculate from the physical area as capture area equals to K into physical area K is constant usually depends upon the type so by substituting that one can calculate uh, GP that is a gain of a parabolic dish antenna as this with the 0.65 as a uh, efficiency you can calculate the gain as 6.41 into dA by lambda whole square as I have told you primary antenna which is uh, uh, that is a feed feed for an uh, parabolic reflector can be of any of these type it can be cut trunked for a um, different types of uh, means uh, not feed uh, different types of parabolic uh, antennas that we have is this then coming to the feed different types of feed that you can make use that is at the vertex that is at the uh, uh, focal point uh, where you will place an antenna no? that feed point can be feed and can be a, uh, any one of this it can be aguda it can be half wave dipole it can be horn any of this can be made use as a uh, feed for a parabolic dish antenna and uh, this is a diagram representing a huge parabolic dish antenna used for radio astronomy applications uh, uh, which is an antenna that uses a parabolic reflector a curved surface with cross section shape as a parabola to direct the radio waves and uh, this is the one well known which you might have you which you might have seen uh, dish type of antenna which is used uh, for uh, uh, mobile uh, radiation uh, these are different diagrams representing parabolic reflector only parabola and hyperbola so this is an antenna diagrams the gain of an antenna all these are the structures representing a parabolic uh, the gain efficiency times directivity you know this efficiency will be depend upon different different parameters uh, like a uh, spillover efficiency tapper efficiency different uh, efficiencies which comes together multiplying these together results in overall efficiency you need to multiply that with directivity to calculate uh, overall gain of the antenna so different types of uh, shapes that we have parabolid uh, dish uh, sprouted dish and cylinder different uh, this is a, a shredded dish uh, which you might have seen in uh, communication relays and uh, this is a different uh, type uh, cylindrical type of parabolic dish antenna so majorly it has a, it is a highly directive antenna and high gain antenna uh, and they are not frequency dependent uh, they are frequency independent they are frequency independent and it receives as well as radiates the signals only in one direction produces a sharp and narrow beam uh, type of an antenna it is uh, handy for end users small reflector antennas major applications are mainly used in a point to point communication microwave relay links for uh, in order to carry telephone television signals and uh, wire which is used in uh, wireless WLAN LAN links for data communication satellite and spacecraft applications radio telescope radar satellite television dish antennas with this we have completed uh, discussion about uh, horn and uh, horn antenna and parabolic dish antenna thank you